All right, hi, we're back. This is The Contrarians. I'm Nick. I'm going to be uh, interviewing Martin today on Renegade. Want to shed some light on this diamond in the rough? Yes, okay. So uh, this episode, yeah, we're, we're looking at Thin Lizzy. And, uh, you know, as we've been doing with this series, uh, the, the whole idea is obviously um, we are finding uh, albums by bands where it's not the is not the popular choice and I believe me I have one definitely for you today that is not the popular choice but this is my favorite Thin Lizzy album I love Thin Lizzy uh, you know most of their albums I I think are great I mean I would have four or five that are that are more or less you know up there very close but my choice for favorite Thin Lizzy album of all time is Renegade and um, <clears throat> you know I, I'm sure a lot of people might go with Black Rose, Jailbreak, which was their only, I believe is their only gold album ever. So this is a band beloved around the world, but it's shocking that they have not done that great in the, uh, in the States. Um, but I just love, I love Renegade. Um, you know, this is a record that, uh, Thin Lizzy's productions, um, you know, often when I'm picking a favorite album, you know, production means a lot to me. Um, Often when uh, when I when I pick an album, it, it has a little bit to do with you know how how good it sounds. I mean, I am distracted by by not great sound. Then Lizzie albums, a lot of them do sound pretty good, um, but I think Renegade is just one of my favorite productions of all time. It's just it's super organic. It's got a lot of bass. It's really warm. Uh, it's not it's not overblown on the treble. It, treble. It's not tinny. Uh, it's not particularly mid range. I just think the guitars sound powerful. The drums sound just super Super, like you're strapping on a big pair of headphones. The bass sounds great. Um, so yeah, I, I just I just find it to be um, just a, a really good, well-rounded, and actually slightly um, slightly mellower Thin Lizzy album, especially after you know the likes of Johnny the Fox. Actually, all of them. Johnny the Fox, Bad Reputation, uh, you know, through to Chinatown was actually a fairly bit quite a bit heavier than this record. Um, but I don't mind that. I don't mind that there's a there's a little bit of a poppy element to it, but um, I don't know. What what do you think of this, or what do you think sh I should be picking as a favorite than Lizzie album? Well, I think I would agree with most people that, you know, Jailbreak, that has the biggest hits. Uh, yeah. The boys are back in town. Uh, yeah. So, you mean, you talk about here. the production. Uh, this album was produced by uh, Chris uh, Sand... Am I pronouncing this right? Sangarides? Yeah, Tangarides, Sangarides, yeah, it's, uh, I'm not quite sure. Sadly, he uh, he just died recently, uh, this year, what is it, 2018? I think earlier this year or late last year. A great guy, I've interviewed him before. He was always willing to talk, um, you know, he, he just had a lot of good insights. You know, he interviewed, or he, he uh, produced Tigers of Pantang, um, y and T. He was an engineer on some seminal albums. So, so yeah. I mean, and this actually doesn't sound. Where is that again? This actually doesn't even sound like one of his productions particularly. He's more of a more of a heavy metal guy. Um, so I, I'm actually surprised it it is by him because this does not sound. He had a few different sounds. This I don't particularly consider to be one of them. So well, that's interesting. Yeah. And he's not the uh, the only personnel change on there. The you know they brought in uh, Snowy White, I think. Uh, yes, but Snowy was on Chinatown. Where's Chinatown here? So we do have. Uh, yeah, here's Chinatown. Great heavy album. A um, lot of great heavy songs on here, but uh, he is on this record as well. Um, Darren Wharton is a little bit of a. He's not pictured on here. I remember interviewing about that. I think he was a little ticked off. We've got. Basically, Thin Lizzy has a four-piece uh, band here, but Darren Wharton is doing uh, doing all the keyboards on this, uh, I do believe. So we've got Scott Gorham, who's the mainstay, one of the greatest drummers of all time, Brian Downey, of course, the legendary Phil Lennett, and, uh, and Snowy White providing guitars. And Snowy is not, you know, I, I don't think he would ever call himself, obviously he's gone on to great fame as, uh, as Roger Waters' guitarist. Um, he would not consider himself a metal guy, but that's what I love about you know the dynamic of this band because he's not particularly a metal guy he's in there with Scott Gorm who's like along with Brian Robertson who's not in, in here anymore the, the, the Keith and Lizzie guy um, and a corollary to that which is quite interesting about this record um, 
I remember uh, the heaviest song on this album by far is Angel of Death. Uh, it opens the album, it's a little macabre, it's heavy, it's like an almost like an Iron Maiden Gallop sort of thing. And I remember the band having reservations about putting that song on here because they thought it was almost too heavy metal. And I love that attitude because I think some of the greatest metal that you ever get is by guys who who are, are, you know, their antennas up about things being too heavy metal, and that's why some of, when Queen makes heavy metal, it's some of the greatest metal of all time. Then Lizzie, the same thing. So I think that's really mature of them to say, I don't know, should we put this Angel of Death song on here? It's kind of heavy metal, right? Um, and But I love it. I, I love that it's on here, and, you know, a, a, a second corollary to that, of course, is when they, they do their very last album before Phil dies, we've got Thunder and Lightning, and this was really heavy metal and shocking, shockingly sharp. And yeah, it's, it's interviewed, it's reviewed, uh, reviewed, produced by Chris as well. And this sounds more like a Chris Tangerides get in the get in the trenches and make a, a new wave of British heavy metal kind of album. This is super heavy. So, um, but the reason I bring this up is is to me and a lot of fans, this album sounds almost too much like uh, too heavy metal, like Angel of Death on this. So. So there you go. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, you're right. I mean, people will pick Jailbreak. They will pick some of these other albums. So I, I don't know. It's 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 a situation where um, there are so many great Thin Lizzy albums. And the other thing that happens, of course, is you get Gary Moore in for Black Rose. So everybody has everybody bases these Thin Lizzy opinions also a little bit on uh, these these key dynamic personnel changes, which you, which you bring up. Hmm. I mean, it's interesting you bring up a uh, new wave of British heavy metal. Uh, I believe this album was released in 81? Yeah. So, I mean, just around then you have bands like Iron Maiden coming around who are uh, clearly influenced heavily by Thin Lizzy, you know, uh, the harmonized guitars especially. Right. Yeah. And they're taking this sound into a new place. Yeah. So, you know, uh, you gave you gave this album 10 out of 10, whereas Rolling Stone and, and uh, All Music both gave it, a, I think, it's, yeah, 2 out of 5. I have okay. notes that Martin doesn't have access to, <laughs> yeah. as usual. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, you know, how, uh, I'm going to put you in a bit of the hot seat here. How mm -hmm. can you defend this album? Because it sounds to me, personally, when I listen to it, like a refined version of an older sound when at the same time you have a whole bunch of bands coming around that are taking that sound into an exciting new place. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, they are the old guard, and I guess they are sounding a little bit old, but I mean, what I like about it is there are certain key examples of bands who who kind of went for a heavier sound during this time. Wishbone Ash a little bit, I believe. It's more the album cover, this Rod of the Bone thing, long story, but Budgie definitely, your eye heap. There are bands that, that actually heavied up around this time, and you're right, you know, it's the new wave of British heavy metal time, right in the thick of it, 1981, and they make an album that has quite a bit of mellowness to it. I mean, this album has, has got no sharp edges whatsoever, and it's got some pretty mellow songs like Fats, um, which is which is kind of like a, a jaunty, jazzy song. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, Mexican Blood, which is very Latin sounding, but I think they're both great songs. And then, but some of the some of the key songs in this aren't even the super heaviest ones. Like Renegade, No One Told Him, and It's Getting Dangerous are these, these just super passionate warm hard rock songs uh, that are not metal at all. The metalist ones on here are Leave This Town, The Pressure Will Blow, and Hollywood I suppose, and Age of Death. So yeah, there's still a fair bit of heaviness on here. But um, you're right, I mean, and then they, but they go do that with this, right? And then what happens is people kind of complain that this is just too heavy and harsh, and this really isn't thing, Lizzie. But you know, you're right, and you and I were talking earlier, and you made a very good point um, about how even song to song, a lot of the songs on here sound like we're kind of doing a new version of that old song and you can yeah. almost match them up a little. I personally don't care because I just think the songs are so great on this album and they just sound like a band in a, in, in a lot of strife and they're dealing with it and they're, it's like, it's, like they, they, it's the White Knuckle album a little bit like Black Sabbath Never Say Die I think where you know I believe at this time Scott and Phil are both you know having their problems with heroin and, uh, and Phil is sounding a little rich and whiskey throated I mean you were saying what were you, what were you, say, you mentioned about the vocals earlier on this album what were you I mean, to me, he sounds uh, almost tired, uh, right. is, is a way to put it. Um, 
it, it sounds like they had to boost a, like, you know, the low end maybe on his, his voice to give it a little bit of richness. Wow, well, yeah. The power's lacking a little. Interesting point, but, yeah. Uh, what, what do you think? You, well, you, that, you seem to like it. That's true. I mean, I, I, think, I think you're hearing a lot of wisdom and depth in his voice and the wisdom of going through this, this long-term heroin and all sorts of drugs situation where um, he is he is sounding tired but he but he's sounding almost like the the wise man on the mount you know and he's and it is it's rich and it's low it's interesting you mentioned about boosting the vocals I'm not sure um, but yeah you're right I guess there is a little bit of that uh, when you say tired I think of when a vocalist is not particularly um, pushed to push a lot of air out of his voice so he isn't he isn't really hollering like a maniac on this and, and it feels like he, he's lacking in energy because of that but but I just think it gives the songs this sort of um, this deep resonance where you figure there is something going on in the band there is a lot of trouble um, you know they're now way deep into their career. We didn't know how deep because Phil was going to die, and I believe it's 1986, and their last album is 1983, so this is the second to last album. But I'm sure there's a little bit of, uh, you know, everything about rock and roll and the road wearing them down, and they're turning to drugs and all this sort of stuff. So it's it's an album where there's a, there's a lot of strife going on underneath, but they, they seem to be, um, you know, dealing with it with integrity. I mean, uh, that's that's very astute. You bring that up. Uh, they they do set out on a tour, despite you know this this album. Uh, I don't think it even charted. Uh, yeah, so it's not yeah. sorry, it charted, but it's not certified. It didn't go gold or anything no, like that. And they still no. went on tour across Europe. So I mean, you can definitely hear they're getting uh, worn down in it. Yes, uh, you know they they are going to continue to tour. They're going to continue to be Thin Lizzy. Although Phil does do a solo album, uh, actually, yeah, he's got one solo album in 1980, Solo in Soho, and I think the second one is 1982, I believe, the Philip Linnet album, Line It Linnet, I think it's Linnet. Um, but basically, um, you know, he, he's he's looking for some other avenues. They're dabbling in some things. They weren't they weren't big fans of this album, and and you're right, as we were talking earlier. I mean, a, a lot of these songs. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, don't even really get in the set list or the greatest hits albums, right? Uh, I don't believe so. They, they don't appear on uh, most of their uh, their live shows. Yeah, so so these songs are not are not any of the big popular hits. Uh, you know, when you think of Thin Lizzy, you think of the ultimate set list of being like the Live and Dangerous album from 1978. Um, and so a lot of this stuff never really happened. Um, you know, in most of these albums, I mean, Chinatown does not have a lot of I mean, really, nothing on here is is that big. Thunder and lightning, there was nothing that big. Uh, we, you know, we had our bar band in our eight, in the eighties, and believe it or not, we played Bad Habits from this and Cold Sweat. We played two songs off in this album in our set list. Um, Black Rose has some good songs, but again, you know, I think of this one. Yeah, do anything you want to do. Got to give it up. This was a great album as well. So this was your Gary Moore album. Maybe he's on an earlier one as well. But I just, I just really think Renegade. Because the production is so high fidelity, it all just stands, it, it just holds together really, really good. And even the heavy songs, you almost feel, just because of this kind of richness and wisdom in their sound, um, they blend into those hard rock ones really, really well. And I don't, I don't particularly even, like I say, I, I enjoy Fats and Mexican Blood as well, the two that the people would complain about the most. Um, and they're both very up tempo, so there's no there's no sappy little ballads on here like Sarah or uh, you know that famous song that everybody loves from Thin Lizzy. I don't know what's it called. I'm still in love with you or whatever. No dancing, I don't mind, but I hate I'm still in love with you. And I don't care about everybody saying it's the greatest Gary Moore guitar solo of all time and all this crap. I can't stand that song. Uh, but there's nothing sappy on here. Uh, it's just those two jaunty, cool songs uh, mixed with these these hard rockers, and then, you know, a, a few pretty heavy ones. It's a pretty heavy album. I, I suppose it's just not produced super heavy metal, so you're not going to hear that heaviness out of it. I think I hear what you're saying. You're saying that it uh, it really reflects uh, the strife that they were going through in the time, and that kind of emotional uh, discordance, but in a, in a polished package. Exactly. I mean, it's very polished. That's a, that's a very good way of putting it, because when a lot of, you know, if... 
a lot of bands, if they're having like major drugs ravaging their band, um, they will put out a crappy album or a uh, or uh, or a bad production, or they'll phone it in and the songs won't be great. This almost sounds like to me almost like the most expensive sounding Thin Lizzy album of all time. That's probably the best way I could put it. It really does. I think it's. I think the production is a big step up on Chinatown and and all of those. I mean. I love the production of Johnny the Fox, but it is it is a little a little almost too organic. Um, but it's not rough, certainly. Bad Reputation is a little bit missing some bass. Jailbreak is missing some bass. Um, but I find Renegade s sounds like like they were six months in the studio and they spent a million dollars on it. It just sounds so good, and I think the songs are great on it. Um, and uh, and yeah. So I guess what we're we're arriving at, and I never really thought of it this way, but you bring up bring up the word polished. I, I find that it's like they rise to a challenge. They're all tired. They're all sick. Um, they're all sick of the rock business, but they somehow rise to the challenge and make this album that sounds like the most professional thing they ever did. I mean, when you phrase it like that, that's uh, that do, that does sound very impressive. I don't know, maybe you're. Uh... Maybe you're convincing me a little bit here. Yeah, but, but your I, choice I would be know. Jailbreak, you think? I, I, I still think I would go with Jailbreak. You know, those classic songs, uh, personally, uh, yeah. they uh, they resonate, you know. They give you that, that fun time party vibe. But I yeah. can hear what you're saying about uh, this is an older, wiser uh, Thin Lizzy that maybe, you know, maybe uh, is paying a little bit for his lifestyle and is sharing that with us. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can't you can't beat I mean the the legendary status of boys are back in town, jailbreak, on a lesser extent, Emerald Warrior. I mean there's some great stuff on that. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, I, I just find, you know, all the kind of most of the non Rocky songs on a few of those albums fall short of the non Rocky songs on this one. So I I just think it's uh I, I just think it's uh it's it's a proud regal album. I mean, this album cover basically says everything you know, I think about this album. It just looks like, a, you know, the colors are rich. They're flying this flag. It just seems like, like the most British and epic uh, album that they ever did. So you'd say you're a Renegade Thin Lizzy fan? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm a Renegade on this show. I mean, our show's called The Contrarians, and this is a Renegade choice, and the album's called Renegade. So there you go. Well, there you have it. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And, you know, we gave you our reasons for uh, our favorite albums. Why don't you give us yours in the comments below?